All right, let's talk big picture takeaways from the week. Joining me for the big picture panel, Cooper Howard, Director and Fixed Income Strategist at the Schwab Center for Financial Research. Michael Townsend back with us. Afternoon, guys. Great to see you. Uh, Mike, so uh, how many more votes we got to count? Uh, we still got a few votes to count, but, uh, you know, it looks there are a couple of races still not called in the Senate in Arizona and Nevada. Both of those look like they'll go with the Democrats. And then there's a handful of races still uh, that probably won't be called until sometime late next week in California uh, for the House of Representatives. But it looks like Republicans are poised to end up with the trifecta, control of the White House, the, the House and the Senate. The House may be only by a couple of seats, you know, two, three, four seats uh, margin. And that could be tricky for some of the policy agenda uh, uh, next year. But it uh, uh, looks like Republicans are, are going to get all three in the end. OK, so uh, full sweep then odds are like, what, 90 plus percent? Something like that. I don't know if it's quite that high. You okay. know, there's a little plausible path to uh, to maybe have Democrats uh, get the House by a seat. But but it looks like, yeah, maybe 90, 85, 90 that uh, Republicans will end up there. All right. Uh, obviously, the uh, election was the highlight this week. But Powell's kind of interesting yesterday, Cooper. Uh, and um, bonds fading a little bit from an early rally, trying to push back against higher yields. Seems like bonds are kind of chopping it up this week. What's your takeaway? Yeah, obviously we had a very, very busy week with the election, uh, then also uh, Powell's meeting and the Fed meeting yesterday. So I think more of the move in Treasuries today is a little bit of a breather, a little bit of a respite from what we've seen over the past few days. Um, our expectation is it's likely that we're going to see higher yields over time, or we would lean more towards higher yields. So we think that there's a potential risk there. So I know my colleagues, Kathy and Colin, have been on recently. In terms of strategy right now, Oliver, we're shifting a little bit. We're sticking to a benchmark or below duration just because there is that potential for risk of yields to move up a little bit higher. So I think that that's worth highlighting as far as kind of the change in what's occurred with this week going forward. Okay. Uh, we got a little bit of a pinch in the yield curve last couple of days. Anything to be worried about, Cooper? Uh, market seeming to say maybe Powell can take a breather for a meeting or two possibly. What do you think? Yeah, I don't think that the movement in the yield curve is too much to be concerned about. But in terms of what this means for the direction of uh, Fed funds rate, our expectation is that we do expect that the Fed is going to continue to cut rates, but it's going to be at a slow and methodical pace. Now, prior to the election, I think what's been priced in since the election has occurred is just fewer rate cuts. So I think that that's relatively appropriate, especially given the potential for uh, fiscal stimulus that might come down the pipeline, tax policies that might come down the pipeline, um, potential for tariffs that might come down the pipeline. I think if you take all of that together, there's just a lot that might be coming. And so to take a slow and methodical approach from here, I think is relatively appropriate. We heard that from Chairman Powell in the near term, the election doesn't really change their outlook. But going forward, I think, yes, they have to start to consider a lot of things. And they have said that they're going to start to consider a lot of things once we know what a lot of those things are. Yeah. Uh, one thing it seemed that we learned, uh, Mike, is that Powell's going to hold his ground if uh, Team Trump comes after him. But then we also saw a report that Team Trump's not going to come after him. I'm curious what you made of those headlines. Yeah, absolutely. My favorite part of the news conference, no question, Oliver, was uh, Jerome Powell's one word answer to the idea of whether he would uh, resign if Trump asked him to. He said no. And then later on a question uh, about whether uh, Trump could fire him or, or other Fed governors, he said uh, not permitted under the law. So six words, two questions, um, very, very powerful. But you're right that, uh, you know, Trump seems to have backed off that idea. One interesting thing kind of making the rounds here in Washington is, is whether he would uh, potentially appoint or nominate the successor to, to uh, Powell, whose term doesn't end until May of 2026, but maybe nominate a successor, you know, say a year early and have this kind of uh, shadow Fed chair uh, that he could use as, as kind of a, a mouthpiece uh, going forward. That'll be interesting. But, you know, this is one of about 100 priorities that the Trump administration is going to have to figure out uh, in the weeks ahead. OK. Uh, hey, Mike, what else? Like, give us kind of the for those uh, not so politically inclined. Well, what typically happens in the 
couple months. I mean, how much momentum do you think his team could build? I mean, they really are saying there's so many things that they want to do. There's like people who are like uh, c civilian citizens that are going to be involved. Elon, RFK, like, it's like well, how do we, what do we know what to expect? Are they just going to start doing stuff already or what? You, you know, Oliver, one of the big differences between the last time, the, you know, the first time that Trump was elected, he really didn't have any structure at all. I don't think he really expected to, to beat Hillary Clinton uh, in 2016. And so it was really, really hard to kind of get things up and going. I don't think you're going to have that issue. They're going to have a lot of the uh, cabinet sort of uh, pre-picked um, so that when he's inaugurated, they're like ready to go uh, pretty much right away through this Senate confirmation process. Uh, and I think they're going to make a lot of decisions about, you know, uh, executive orders and, and that sort of thing that they can have uh, have going right away. I, I do think the markets are going to spend the next several uh, weeks kind of trying to parse out what are the priorities going to be? You know, you can't do everything on day one. You can't do everything in month one. And, you know, sorting through tariffs and taxes and some of these other issues, you know, that, those issues are going to take a while uh, once he's inaugurated to, to actually happen. So I think the market is in this period of, of kind of feeling out what is going to be real. Is he really going to put tariffs on everything? You know, that, that kind of thing. And I think we'll get some signals about how that's going to play out here over the next uh, t you know, 10 weeks or so. Yeah. All right. Uh, Cooper, next week for inflation. Uh, any uh, potential movement on that? Has uh, the uh, bar kind of shifted a little bit to the possibility of warmth? You know, I think what we've seen in terms of inflation is that there's been a little bit of a recent stalling out in terms of moving down closer to the 2% target. That was also acknowledged just yesterday in the statement. Powell also mentioned it in the press conference. So our expectation is that eventually we're going to get down to that 2% road, but it is going to be a choppy road to get down there. So it could be another source of volatility in terms of the market going forward, though, Oliver. All right. Great stuff. Well said. Thanks, guys. Nice little prep for the coming weekend months. Thanks for the help all week on the election stuff. Mike Townsend, Cooper Howard.